In the early 1950s, a powerful wave of change swept across Africa, igniting a fervent quest for independence. This transformative era saw the birth of a continent's collective dream, the dream of freedom and sovereignty. In the heart of this historical movement, a pivotal conference convened in Accra, Ghana, beckoning representatives from far and wide to unite and champion the cause of Africa's independence. This conference was a beacon of hope where visionaries like Kwame Nkrumah, the future president of Ghana, and Tom Boyer, one of Kenya's founding fathers, gathered to shape the destiny of their nations. Amidst this congregation of luminaries, Uganda had its own representative too, a name that would resonate through the annals of history, Abubaka Kachama Mayanja. In this episode of Uganda in History, we embark on an extraordinary journey through the life of Abu Mayanja, a dedicated fighter for Uganda's independence. The man known to history as Abu Kachama Mayanja was born in 1929 in the district of Mukono to Abdallah Waswa Kambuga Kachama and Maria Antonia Kaya. His father Abdallah hailed from Mukono district while his mother Maria Antonia had roots in the Bufuma Islands. Abu's father was a devout Muslim and was a subsistence farmer too, while his mother was a Christian. These multicultural upbringings would shape Abu's worldviews in more ways than one. Despite the challenges of growing up in a relatively poor family, Abu Mayanja was a shining star in the making. His mother, Maria Antonia, played a pivotal role in his early education. She encouraged him to read and write by using old newspapers that had once wrapped a local delicacy like banana pancakes. As he advanced in his education, it became evident that Abu Mayanja was no ordinary student. His brilliancy shone through as he blazed through school, even skipping senior three due to his exceptional intellect. In 1949, he sat for his senior six examination at Old Kampala, achieving remarkable results. But before that, Abu's performance in the primary living examination set a record with the highest marks in the entire country at the time. But the story doesn't stop there. Abu's educational journey led him to King's College Gudo in 1944 under the headship of D.G.R. Hubbard. Here, he was admitted to the England House and crossed paths with the influential teacher Apollo K. H. Ronde, who would later join him in the fight for Uganda's independence. We shall cover Apollo K. H. Ronde in the next video. In 1950, Abu Mayanja took another bold step by enrolling at Makere University College to study English, literature, history, and mathematics. During his time at Makere, he took on the role of editor for the Makere Current News, a university newspaper, and served as the secretary of the Guild Council. But here comes a twist in the plot. In 1952, Abu Mayanja, along with fellow students, took a stand by complaining about the university diet and initiating a strike. Their actions resulted in his expulsion from Makere University College. However, Abu's commitment to education and his involvement with the Uganda National Congress UNC persisted. As the winds of change swept through Uganda, Abu Mayanja found himself at the forefront of a movement. In 1949, Ignatius Kangavi Mosas organized a group of Buganda farmers who marched to the king's palace in Mengo to demand for equal rights for all the clans in Buganda and equal representations in the parliaments of Buganda. These protests, though noble, led to riots and property destruction. It's worth noting that Abu Mayanja, with determination in his heart, journeyed on foot several times to attend these crucial meetings. It was here on March 2, 1952, that he made a before decision, when Ignatius Kangabe Musas called on for a secretary general for the newly formed UNC party, Abu Mayanja stepped up to the plate. With the new found determination, both Ignatius Kangabe Musas and Abu Mayanja embarked on a journey across Uganda, preaching the message of independence now, the rally cry of the UNC. Now, at this point, Sir Henry Cohen, the British governor of the Uganda Protectorate from 1950 to 1955, enters the scene. Cohen, a shrewd administrator, held a complex relationship with the Baganda people. While they disliked him for exiling Sekabaka, Sir Edward Mutesa II in 1953, he would play a pivotal role in Abu Mayanja's journey. In 1953, Mayanja led a nationwide opposition to the Oliver Layton forced East African Federation plan, 
pushing for independence, but as the struggle continued, he decided to cooperate with the colonialists and even received a Cambridge scholarship. Here is where the story takes an unexpected turn. While the Colonial University scholarship was withdrawn for his underground activities for the fight for independence in Uganda and Africa at large, Abu Mayanja continued his studies with the Buganda Kingdom Bursary. In 1955, he was part of the Trifat entourage that welcomed Mutesa back to Uganda. But as politics played in its hand, Buganda Kingdom grew hostile towards the UNC, especially for his association with Kwame Nkrumah, who was involved in dismantling the King of Uganda. During Mutesa's visit to London in February 1958, he avoided a meeting with Abu Mayanja. In response, Abu Mayanja openly told the press in London that the UNC's plan was to remove the British and establish a government without a king. As tensions rose, Uganda withdrew the bursary, forcing Abu Mayanja to complete his studies with the support of John Kelly from the Afro-Asian People's Solidarity Organization in Cairo. The man known to history as Abu Mayanja made his triumphant return to Uganda on the fateful day in May 1959. Now little did he know that his homeland had undergone profound changes during his absence. After completing his undergraduate studies at Cambridge University and venturing into the world of law, and even working at the chambers of the Roland Brown, Abu Mayanja was back in his homeland ready to face a political landscape he would hardly recognize. You see, while he was away at the United Kingdom, the Uganda National Congress Party had splintered into fractions. Abu Mayanza's return was met with the shocking revelation that the UNC political party, which had once been his political anchor, was now no more. But there was something even more surprising waiting on for him. Just months into his private legal practice at the tender age of 29, Abu was called upon to take on the role he had never expected, to become the Mengo's Minister of Education. It was as if Disney had more plans for him, the ones he couldn't have foreseen. His journey from that point forward would be a roller coaster ride of political twists and turns, from the declaration in the Uganda's August House to his involvement in the Lancaster House Conference, where Uganda's independence from the British was negotiated. Along the way, he would face insults, arrest, and even imprisonment, but his unwavering spirit would carry on. In the Uganda's August House in 1958, Mayanja boldly declared that he had crossed the ribbon setting himself politically against any autocracy, whether it be foreign and imperialistic or native and feudal, his statement marked a turning point in his life and commitment to principles that would guide his actions in a turbulent political landscape of his time. And before that, he had ventured to the United States of America on a leadership grant, adding another layer to his incredible story. His experience there would shape his perspective and his role in a tumultuous event that would follow. However, the political landscape is never without its challenges and controversies. In April 1964, during a heated session of the Parliament of Buganda, Abu Mayanja faced a personal insult from the Speaker, Mr. Eriosa Fikalule. This event led to his resignation from the position of the Minister of Education. But Abu's political journey was far from over. Later that same year, he experienced a remarkable comeback when he was elected as the Member of Parliament in September 1964. This election followed the resignation of Jimmy Simpson as the representative of Chagwe Northeast. It was a testament to Abu's enduring influence and support among the people of Chagwe. Abu Mayanja's journey through Uganda's political landscape continued with remarkable significances. In 1962, he was part of a delegation that represented Uganda at the Independence Conference. This pivotal event Mark the formation of a transition of Uganda from a colony to an independent nation. Abu was not merely a bystander. He was entrusted with the crucial responsibility of overseeing the implementation of the 1962 constitution in Buganda. This role meant that he played a pivotal part in integrating Uganda's constitution into the broader framework of the Uganda government. However, as history often demonstrates, Speaking the truth to power can often come at a cost. In October 1968, Abu Mayanja found himself on a collusion course with the authorities. His critic of the 1967 Uganda Constitution, which he expressed in the pages of the Transitional Magazine in April 1968, was a daring act that upset the government at the time. 
his unwavering commitment to the principles and his willingness to challenge the status quo led to his arrest alongside other notable figures on charges of sedition. The arrest of these prominent figures sent shockwaves through Uganda and it drew condemnations from intellectuals and activists like Professor Ali Mazrui, a respected scholar, issued a powerful statement in which he expressed his solidarity with Abu Mayanja and Rijat Niyowi. He stated that I personally know of no two people who have contributed more of intellectual liveliness of Uganda than Abu Mayanja and Rijat Niyowi. In the turbulent years that followed, Abu Mayanja's life took unexpected turns. In 1971, he found himself appointed as the Minister of Education by none other than Idi Amin, the enigmatic and controversial leader of Uganda. However, just a year later, on November 30, 1972, Abu Mayanja, alongside several other government ministers, faced a sudden and shocking dismissal from their ministerial positions. At the time of his removal, Abu Mayanja held the position of the Minister of Labor. Idi Amin's justification for the mass sacking was characteristically blunt. He claimed that the ministers were incapable of keeping up with the pace of his government, which he humorously described as running at a supersonic speed. This abrupt shift in Mayanja's political fortunes once again underlined the volatile nature of the Uganda's political history during that era. But the most dramatic twist in Abu Mayanja's life came when he found himself arrested by Amin soldiers and confined to the cramped and intimidating space of a car boat. His distraught wife, with the heart filled with fear and determination, sped to Amin's office, pleading for her husband's release. The car carrying Abu Mayanja soon arrived at Amin's presence, and he was set free. Without hesitation, Abu Mayanja made a swift escape to Nairobi marking the beginning of his life in exile. Now during his time in Nairobi, Abu Mayanja became a prominent figure in Uganda's exile committees. Together with fellow Uganda exiles, he played a pivotal role in organizing a liberation movement aimed at overthrowing the tyranny regime of Idi Amin. Their determination and collective efforts sought to bring an end to the oppressive era that had crippled Uganda. Abu Mayanja's sense of duty extended beyond his involvement in the liberation movement. In 1972, he chaired a committee responsible for the arrangements surrounding the repatriation of the body of Sekabaka Sir Edward Mutesa II. The late Sekabaka had passed away in London in 1969 and the return of his remains to Uganda held great significances. This solemn responsibility underscored Abu's commitment to the nation's historical legacy. Now, when the winds of change finally swept across Uganda in 1986, when Yowari Kaguta Museveni assumed power, after recognizing Abu's experience and education, Museveni appointed him as Antony General and Deputy Prime Minister. It was a testament to Abu's enduring influence and his capacity to contribute positively to his nation's governance. Now, throughout his life, Abu Mayanja primarily resided in Lunguja near Mengo, a witness to the changing tides of Uganda's history. He experienced periods abroad, notably as a student in the UK, and endured imprisonment during the 1960s for his brave act of writing an article critical to the 1967 Uganda Constitution. Now, remarkably, during one of these arrests, it was Mualimu Julius Nyerere, the late president of Tanzania, who came to his aid by paying his necessary fine for his release. Abu Mayanja died on November 4th, 2005. Later on July 30th, 2007, a memorial lecture was held in his honor. The Abu Mayanja Foundation Inikro Memorial Lecture was delivered by the renowned African academic and political writer, Professor Ali Mazrui, at the Rezori Ballroom in Sheraton Hotel Kampala. Professor Mazrui had a significant connection to Uganda. Having lived and worked at Makerere University from 1965 to 1973, during his time, he served as the head of the Department of Political Science in 1965 to 1973 and as the Dean of the Faculty of Social Sciences from 1967 to 1969. The Inigro lecture by Professor Ali Mazrui was entitled between sexual activism and religious observances, Abu Mayanja and Africa's triple heritage. If you found this video informative and engaging, don't forget to give it a like, subscribe and share to help the channel grow. This has been Regan for Uganda in History and see you in another video.